All right, we're at the HMI booth at CES, uh, talking about another great feature of HMI 2.1. Uh, here from Microsoft is at Norm, talking more about some of the gaming features that's going to be available for HMI 2.1, uh, with a lot of new uh, devices coming out uh, this year. Because you considered many things for the gamers, right? Yes, this is very... They are asking for stuff. Uh, exactly. So this yeah. will benefit a lot of gamers, uh, interactive uh, applications uh, beyond just gaming as well. But gaming, I think, will be the, uh, the key, feature, key uh, application that can take advantage of many of the features that's available in HMI 2.1. All right. So, hello. So, who, hi, so who are you? Hi, my name is Norm Lemieux. I work on the Xbox team for Microsoft. Uh, these features are basically four major ones. Variable refresh rate, or VRR, which makes game frame rates very smooth by allowing them to change according to how the GPUs can render them. Uh, quick frame transport, which allows the information to be transmitted at a higher rate than normal, which will decrease the uh, display latency between the time that the data is available inside the source and the time that it finished paints, finishes painting on the screen. So you can decrease by multiples of milliseconds the amount of time that you have, and that makes the gaming experience more responsive. We've also added a feature called Auto Low Latency Mode, which is a method for the source, in this case a console or a gaming PC, to tell the TV to switch over to game mode, which again changes it from its normal video processing mode to a very low latency gaming mode, and again, makes the experience more responsive. The final feature that we added is something called quick media switching, which allows the source to change the frame rate from whatever the base refresh rate is, like 60 hertz or 120 hertz, down to a normal media rate like 24 hertz for movies without causing an interruption in the video transport. So you will just see it smoothly go through from one frame rate to another, and anything below the nominal base refresh rate of, which is typically 60 hertz or 50 hertz, down to 30 or 25 or 24, it can smoothly switch between any of them, staying at the same resolution and not having an interruption of the video feed. So uh, the future TVs are going to be able to kind of like switch modes between uh, displaying kind of like 24 frame native and then go up to a higher frame rate when you play a game? Yes. So normally what happens if you go into like an app application like Netflix or Hulu and they have trailers on there, the trailers can be at different frame rates and they can show them at the native frame rate which preserves the artistic intent without having to change that or to rescale all of the content to 60 hertz, right? Because that changes the artistic intent of the video. By allowing the source and the sync to show it at 24 hertz using the VRR mechanism and quick media switching, you can go back and forth very, very quickly in this instance and actually have it shown the way it should be shown. But do any TVs today have uh, uh, multiple frame rates or hertz in them? Or is uh, today, it something that's going to happen in the future? Today, TVs do not. We just introduced the spec and they are looking at the capabilities of their current chipsets on if they can implement some of these features. Auto low latency mode should be turned on fairly quickly because it's fairly simple, but it's very, very powerful in getting the TV into game mode when it needs to be in game mode. So uh, in the future, the TVs will have variable frame rates. Yes, in the future, Thanks to TVs you. can Thanks turn- Thanks to the spec supporting it already. Right? Thanks to the HMI 2.1 spec, TVs can include all of these fantastic gaming features. Up to 120, up to more, 144? 120 hertz, up to 144. It all depends on what's in the EDID. And, uh, uh, and then you don't want to watch a movie in 144 hertz, right? It would be totally wrong. That's but correct. They, they, they Typically, you down. yes. Well, you don't downscale it. What you do is use the VRR mechanism, which will bring the frame rate down to whatever the native media is that you're feeding into it. Can we can we jump just over here a little bit uh, with the sound? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, how is it possible to to remove lag in gaming, and how is HDMI helping in that? 
So the, there's a couple of features that do that. The auto low latency mode will turn the game, will turn the TV from its normal video processing mode into its game mode. The TV knows that you're gonna be feeding it gaming content, so it removes some of the processing that's inappropriate for the gaming scenario. A lot of this is motion interpolation, motion compensation. Upscaling? Upscaling also, which it doesn't need to do because we're feeding it at the native rate that, that it needs to and be the transmitted. And console is upscaling already, right? Okay. The console is upscaling it. So if your console is upscaling it, scaling it to 4K and the TV is already at 4K, it doesn't need to do any scaling. Because many people right now are upscaling several times. The set-top box is doing it, then, and then the TV is also doing it, or the console is doing it, and the TV is also doing or it. Or your AVR that's in between can also do scaling. So there's triple upscaling. That's yes. too much, right? Yeah, and you really want your scaling to be done, A, by the device that does it the best, and B, by the device that does it quickest. If you can have quick scaling, then that reduces any possible latency. If you have slow scaling, then that's not really good for the gaming scenario. And so is that related with uh, getting it directly from the GPU to the screen in the same like uh, frame or what? There's going to be no delay, is that what's going to happen? Gonna uh, there's going to be frame. little delay. Yeah, they're doing scaling on the output of a game console is very, very quick. So it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Uh, motion compensation, uh, frame interpolation inside a TV, that takes a lot of time. And they usually do that if it gets 24 hertz video and they want to display it at 60 hertz. So by giving it 60 hertz 4K image, then that doesn't happen. And we tell it to turn off any additional processing, which is not normally required for game content. So that really reduces the latency inside the TV. The quick frame transport, which doubles or triples or quadruples the clock speed that we send the information across, allows the video for the game information to be transmitted quicker, and then the TV can start its video processing on that and then start painting the screen. So that overall latency is also decreasing the lag between when the frame is done being uh, created and the time that it's painted on the screen. So what is this quick frame transport? Where is that? Is that in the chip? Is that a, a, in the... Where does it happen? Quick frame transport is um, in kind of the output structure of the uh, source and the input structure of the sink. So what you're doing is normally you have uh, control mechanisms that output video at a certain rate and at a certain resolution. So 1080p60 is transmitted at certain timing. Uh, quick frame transport doubles or triples, for example, the clock that it sends this information out, and if the video is the same amount and you double or triple the amount of time, it takes less time to actually send the video. And so if you start the processing at the back end that the TV does on the information, and then it starts painting it earlier, then you've decreased the amount of time about this much in between the time that you transport it and the time that you would normally transport it at the base rate. So quick frame transport transports frames quicker. Uh, so uh, all these uh, pro gamers, they buy expensive uh, PC monitors that have uh, faster, less lag and stuff like that. Um, uh, they, they already implement some of these things already in the previous generations of HDMI maybe? or. No, actually what gaming monitors do is they have very, very quick circuits inside, expensive circuits, and they typically have very small monitors that they can implement this on. I don't think I've seen any larger than 32 inches. Nothing what like we're this. doing is we're enabling very, very quick gaming for, let's say, the living room experience with large screens. Here you see something that's about 40, 43 inches, but we're also talking about 85 and 100 inch screens Any that you size. can do it any size, as long as it has the HDMI interface and implements VRR and these other gaming features. So when we're looking at these new uh, cables, uh, HDMI 2.1, does a 48 gigabit per second help with gaming too, to have more bandwidth, or is it something else? It does, and one of the ways that it does help is with quick frame transport, because you remember that we're doubling or tripling or quadrupling the speed at which the data goes through there, and you need higher and higher clock rates in order to make that happen. So by using the higher speed transmission chips and the higher speed cable, you can get to those higher multiples and decrease your latency, your display latency down to something very, very small.
And that's good for everybody. That's good for the PC gaming, for the console gaming. That's it's good. good for it's good for everybody who uses HDMI. Everybody who uses HDMI, and uh, the cables. Hopefully, people are gonna find out which ones are the compatible ones. You have to yes. get the right one. Yeah, we one. label it that way. The you could color the whole cable, new colors. <laughs> Something that people know. You, there are multiple sources of different colored cables, but the labeling is the important thing. The new 48G cables are labeled ultra high speed HDMI cable. So that's actually it's quite exciting, right? What's going to happen? It's, it, now it's 2.1, but now the devices are going to come thanks to. Yep, spec we're, being we're ready. getting closer and closer to what PC gamers have had with their expensive gaming monitors and their uh, very low latency very responsive systems and we're making that happen at the large scale with HDMI. Next generation desktop computers, next generation laptops will have HDMI 2.1 outputs, but also next generation consoles and next generation TVs and everything is going to be super exciting. Yes. Now there are some features that are easy to implement with firmware updates that already exist, but customers really need to talk to their device supplier, their TVs, their AVRs, their consoles to find out what which of these features can be added to their current systems. So maybe some of them will support some of these things already. That is correct. Well, not not already, but they can be turned on in the short term rather than waiting years and years for new silicon to come out. Uh, do you think uh, uh, dynamic HDR helps with gaming too? Certainly, absolutely. But with gaming, as opposed to information that comes off of Blu-ray, on Blu-ray, the, the, the HDR information is kind of canned for the entire movie. Uh, in other words, it's there for the entire title. Um, and so it doesn't change. With gaming, we can change it any time that we want, so we're not limited to the static HDR metadata or the dynamic HDR metadata, because every game level can be like a different title. So we can change it on the fly as we need to. And uh, over here, I was just checking, it says uh, 8K60 and 4K120. That's gonna be some pretty cool gaming, right? It could yes. even be higher with compression. Yes, although, the 4K 120 is going to be better than 8K uh, 60 because, again, the higher frame rates gives you a smoother gaming experience. And that's what VRR is all about, too, to make it smoother and, and remove judder and jitter out of the equation. But with compression, some of the partner compression technologies, right, you could do 8K 120. But you have to be able to render it inside the, the GPU inside your system. And that's not necessarily where we're at today. So we're just getting to the point where you can do 4K um, at 60 hertz, 4K at 100 hertz, 4K at 144. Getting at 8K, now you're really talking about the next generation. But let's say a couple years, maybe. A then couple we'll, years, we'll I look, I look forward to it. 8K 144 hertz, right? 8K with 144 on with compression may be possible at the 48G. With no lag with reduced lag. Reduced lag. And we're just talking about frame rates and stuff, but there's all these graphics need to be rendered at those frame rates. It's the crazy advances we need in the GPUs, but luckily the GPUs are going, they're, pr they're progressing like crazy fast. Faster yes. than CPUs, right? Yes. Every year it seems to triple or something. Yes. So actually it, it will be possible. Yes. Right? Eventually it'll be possible. And uh, it will look like reality. To be in that it will look like reality. People okay. will disappear into their gaming experiences. But hopefully they'll go outside too and get some air, right? And uh, yes. play soccer or something. Yes, eat. eat. Okay.